In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make your capital sans serif lettering look a little bit more modern or a little less maybe rule follow-y. So if we just look at this gray versus the teal, both of these look good. I mean, they're both very neat. They're both very consistent and they look good. It's just that the top one is a little bit more of a grid based following the rules and the bottom one is, has a little bit more personality and looks a little bit more modern. So if you followed along with our March of the Capitals um, sans serif lettering lessons, we did teach you exactly how to write each letter on a grid and that's what makes them, maybe if you've been following along with that or if you just tend to make your letters very stiff or very um, following the grid, this is kind of what it would look like. So we're going to go dive into each letter and talk about the differences and things that you can switch up to make them look a little bit more modern. So we're just going to go letter by letter here, starting with A. So again, all of these still look good, it's just that they can look a little bit more um, unique or have some more modern fun and flair. So for the A, you can instead of making it perfectly um, symmetrical, you could try slanting it a little bit or maybe making it a little bit wider on the bottom. I also like to extend my crossbar a little bit beyond the edges of the triangle. For the B, I'm going to start with the same stem, but instead of starting this curve right at the top here, I'm actually going to start a little bit below and angle that part up. And I tend to make my, my letters have a lower crossbar. So we actually have a whole video on how you can vary the position of your crossbar instead of making it exactly centered, you can make move it up or down. Okay, for the C, I like to make mine have this little extra shade here on the top. The D is going to be similar to the B in that we're starting, starting like this, angling this a little bit upward. So this curve is not symmetrical if you were to split it horizontally here, this one is symmetrical or it ref would reflect across that horizontal axis, whereas this one is a different shape. So it's kind of like half of a heart actually. All right, for the E, now when I'm making them on the grid, I draw the lines separately and make them very straight, but you can kind of make this all in one stroke and maybe curve the bottom a little bit more and then um, the crossbar, I tend to extend it a little bit beyond the edge here. All right, similar to the F, we're just gonna make it a little bit quicker. Again, I'm crossing a little bit lower here, um, like on the F, on the E, I probably would have, should have crossed it a little bit even lower than I did just to be consistent. Okay, for the G, we're gonna use the same additional shade that we used on the C here on the top right, and then cross it a little bit lower. Okay, for the H, I'm crossing lower and extending the crossbar. I is just kind of the same. You could uh, maybe add a little bit of curve to it. So for the J, I'm bringing, I'm curling that part in more. Now the K, I'm just not bringing this leg all the way down to the baseline. I'm keeping it a little bit higher up. And then this part is done in one stroke rather than two separate strokes. The L, I tend to just make the bottom part a little bit less wide or long. Okay, for the M, um, just writing it a little bit faster is going to help it not look so symmetrical. So for this one, I drew the two lines here and connected them exactly in the middle. For this one, you can see I started at the bottom, came up and down like this. So this left stem is a little bit more curved. Similarly with the N, I usually make one of these parts higher. So whether it's that first part or the second part, like you can see here, one of them is going to be taller. The O pretty much stays the same for me. Um, you could try crossing it specifically or making it so that it doesn't connect perfectly at the top here. P is similar to the B and the D. <laughs> um, Q, sometimes I just, instead of making this crossbar come all the way down to the baseline like this, like for the K, you make it a little bit higher up and actually similar with the R. Um, I usually make this part, like rather than starting this leg here over a space, I just connect it uh, with this, this first stroke so that this is done all in one. And then usually I make this um, like the K where the leg isn't reaching all the way to the baseline. Um, for the S, 
So basically, instead of making them symmetrical, you can make, I make my top bigger, or you can make um, the bottom bigger. T, I just like to show a little bit of that cross bar, or a little bit of the stem on the on top of the crossbar, so cross it a tiny bit lower. For the U, I just make one of them a little bit shorter, same thing with the V. So instead of making them come all the way up to the same height, one of these is a little bit lower. Same thing with the W, I do it all in one stroke rather than making it very precise. This is basically two V's that are overlapping a little bit, whereas this is done all in one stroke, this end part is a little bit higher and um, it's a little bit curved. X's I just cross lower and then you can see that these aren't exactly the same height. Um, let's see, for the Y I pretty much just make it the same. Maybe I make this um, come down lower. And then ampersand, I usually make mine this style for something a little bit more modern and fun. Okay, and then for the Z, um, instead of lining these up vertically where this part and this part are vertical, I bring this bottom left part out a little, little bit. So I've been thinking about this type of style and how to make my letters look a little bit more modern. It's actually for a font that I'm working on, and here are all of the original sketches from it. So this I actually did with a Sharpie, and you can you can just see some of the things that I was talking about, like for the P and the R. Um, Everything's just a little bit different, like the E, I'm crossing it lower rather than right in the middle. So here's just some sketches from this. These are the original sketches that I'm vectorizing and putting into a software and programming all of the font features um, to be released sometime soon. So hopefully this helped make your letters just look a little bit more modern, a little bit less um, of a grid formula. And hopefully you can start using these tips to add some more personality to your letters.